Hello world! Welcome back to our second video for RESTful application programming model where we're doing a review of a tutorial from sapdevelopers.com and we are going to real work now and we are going to the Eclipse creating core data services, core data service projections, creating a service, service binding and also we are going to create behavior definitions and the behavior definition implementation. Before you start developing, we need to do some preparations. So I go to the second chapter of this tutorial. And here we will see we will need to do some other packages, database table creation and create a class that is generating the test data and the prerequisites are that we need something to do with a cloud platform and we need a user and we need also Eclipse and the above development tools so here it's, we don't have here any first links only here for this Eclipse stuff and you either have already a SAP 1909 system where this should also work and the user and also maybe Eclipse installed. If not, we have now the ability to make ourselves a free SAP ABAP cloud system at SAP within the subcloud platform without any extra costs. And I have also a much nicer blog that is explaining how this procedure, these three steps are done. So this one is a nice block where all the first steps are summarized and I will just show you here. This is this, this block. It's trial time for ABAP in subcloud platform. So in the subcloud platform when you have registered here you can add a service, it's ABAP trial and within the service you will get a SAP system which is running on a SAP data center uh, ABAP system um, where we can do this tutorial. So, the, and here we have these three steps get a free trial account at Subcloud Platform, create a Cloud Foundry account, and get the ABAP development tools that means Eclipse and get it. This one I showed you now in detail with the links in the screen here. So number one, trial account. It's really easy and, and nice to understand and it's a step-by-step -step approach here. So you, you will get this done for sure. So once you have done step number one, you can do step number two. And shortly I tried this and then the link here included was not working anymore. So I searched for another one and at Sublearners I got also another link which was working. Maybe the this one link is temporarily not working or not working anymore. But with the sublearners.com link you also would get it done to get a Cloud Foundry trial account. And once this is done you have still to install Eclipse and adding the ABAP development tool to Eclipse. And here this also very nice explained in this link. So this is the preparation we need to do before we can do our hands dirty. I hope you came over this hurdle of these three steps and now I'll show you how it should look like. Now a subcloud platform logon. So I logged already on. It was um, cockpit hana trial on demand .com. And um, here's the enter your trial account. You should be able now to log on here. And here mine one is named trial. Hosted in US. Which is now a real system which was started in the cloud. And also I have a 
that space, which is a kind of separated area. And you see I have already some services running at this space, in this development space. My space is called dev. Your one should be empty at the moment. Good. Um, this one here is what should be available now once you create your Cloud Foundry trial account. And then last but not least, you should have now um, Eclipse available. So that's my Eclipse system. I have here the version 2020.06. I used it once with the 2019.03, I think it was, and this did not work at a certain point of time in this tutorial. Then I got an error, so I had to upgrade it here to 2020.06 version. And I show you also how your web platform you already registered should now be available in the Eclipse workspace. Finally, it should like look like this here. ABAP debugger TRL for trial system um, should be available. And so, view others, and here enter ABAP Cloud Project. And I did like this um, in the installation process or at um, creating your Cloud Foundry trial account. You're coming over a point where a service key is offered, and this service key is a JSON formatted text, you can enter this text here, copy and paste it here, or import this JSON file, and finally you go to finish, and then here your system is available. That's all for the preparation. Now that we have everything what we need, we can go ahead with the tutorial. starting with developing. Once you're in your Eclipse and you have your ABAP cloud system available here, then we can go to our tutorial to see what we have to do next. So the first step is create table persistency and generate data. Um, it's all about a travel example where we have the header data of our travel from a travel agency and this should be maintained in an app or in a, yeah, Fiori data. So this is explained step by step and I'm not going through the tutorial. I just do it freehand as I did it already once. But it is really well explained and step by step described in the tutorial. So it's not difficult to do this. What we're doing here is we are creating with a right mouse click. Uh, first of all, I want to say you, um, you should use a perspective, which is um, yeah, well elaborate for for you for developing here. Open perspective, and I would say you should use the upper perspective here. The perspective is um, yeah a set of tools and views here predefined for using developments. In Eclipse, we're going to new, other, we're using a other package. Ah, it asks me to log on. This is done once and then afterwards I'm directly logged on. So now it's asking me for the package name. We name it Z Travel app and then a three digit um, own postfix. I use SB3 for now all my forwarding developments. We don't need a super package. Ah description is missing. No develop development. Travel at SB3. Go to next. Go to next. 
Uh -huh. We we'll use this set local. Next, then we use a transport. <coughs> you can create at the first step a new transport. We will do this now. Here, SP3 demo coding. RESTful application programming model. We finish. And then we have this package available. I add this package because it's not yet here visible. I add this package to my favorite packages. And here we have some. Let me take this. And now we can see our package here. What next? After we have the package, we want to have a yeah, data model or a basic data table where we can put our fields in. We get in, click on the right mouse on our new package, new, other upper repository objects, database table. Enter here, used. the name of the table. We use our new transport, click on finish. And here a table, crude table definition is here. In the tutorial you see coding, you can copy and paste. I'm not a big fan of copy pasting, but according to the leak of time, we just do it like this. And here we have triple uh, X. We have now this suffix to substitute with our suffix, which is here sp3. You can hit Control and F for find and enter here this one and substitute all occurrences of underscore triple X with, for example, here your suffix. Place all. That's it. What we can see in this CSV view. Now I have to change this one. This is a table. As we don't have the old school ABAP stack available and the data dictionary, we don't have here a um, sub GUI where we can log on with and go to a SE element transaction to see our table, but we can do it like this here. We just define the keys. We, with this column after the field explanation, um, field type is mentioned, and we have your client, we have a key, we have a travel ID, which is telling us um, in a readable way what travel, what what ID it is. Let's say. 110 and something like this, the angels here, the ID with a nice name, customer ID, begin date, end date. And here we have a semantic, um, with the semantic, with this annotation, we can tell the table that the following field is a currency code, which is booking fee. The next one is semantic amount currency code, which is um, written for the next field which is total price and finally we have the currency code a description a world status created by created at last changed by last changed at that's all the main fields of our travel example we can activate it here that's our table and then we can hit f8 and see the table content for sure, at the moment the table is empty. Therefore, there's a small um, class or class of methods which fill this table with um, some entries. This is also explained in the tutorial how this is done. I will just do it here freehand. Okay. 
go to right mouse click on my package, say new, ABAP class, the class name is as follow, and here I name my suffix. I go ahead, take the transport, finish. And here is the rudimental class, which is not filled with much data now. Also here there is some coding which we can enter to fill this class with life and to create data. Also here I also substitute the triple X with the SP3. So we see here there's an internal table filled with one, two, three data lines, then the table is cleared, the internal table is inserted to the table, and afterwards a select is done, and the output is also done. So we can do it with... Oh, here I forgot to fill in the declaration part of the class. Also here substitute the travel x with my suffix. Replace all. Now it's working. I can execute it with F8. Or I can also run it with this one. Our application. Ah oh, yes, it worked. Here we see in the ABAP console um, the result, which is the list. Field 3 travel data inserted successfully. That's the result. We can check the um, field data. We go into our data ta base table and we hit F8. And now finally we see our three entries here in excellent. This is the end of the first part of the tutorial, and now we go to the next one. We're going to define and expose a CDS-based travel data model. It means we are creating a CDS view. So what do we have now? From our data model here we have the very very lowest layer now. We created a table. Usually maybe we in, in a realistic environment we use already existing table tables maybe which are already is in the system. Um, we created this one. So what is next? Um, and we filled it with, with data. Next is we create here a CDS view or this data model and this is also described in the um, in the second chapter here yeah, this was part one part two create a table persistency and generate data part three which we are doing now is define and expose a CDS based travel data model so but we will not go into details here because this is really well explained and step by step and screen for screen explained. I just do it freehand here. In the Eclipse we are creating now a CDS view. We go to new other above um, objects and we enter data definition. This is what we need for the CDS view and we give it a name it's called ZVI. That's the name. VI travel M, then my suffix. And this is the CDS data model. We go to next, take our transport, click finish. And what we get is we get here predefined coding, which we could fill now with live, either by hand or we just take the 
code and copy it into out of the tutorial. Once again, I substitute the triple X with my prefix. Then I activate it. And what I see here is now I have a few, that's the name, and we select to one table, that's our new table. And we have fields here, that's mostly all fields we have here in our table are used. And what we have is now a very powerful tool here in the CDS views, which is called associations. So associations is a kind of join to other tables where we can allow to dive in to the, those tables. So we have um, with this table, let's say here, the agency table, we have a um, foreign key um, reference with the, with the field agency underscore ID from the agency table is corresponding to our agency ID field without underscore here to our current table set travel SP3. So um, we will see what, and we have also the same for customer and currency, this foreign key relationships. And we will see if we execute this now, what the magic is behind. First, it looks like the same as our table. Yes, because the table fields are the same. But now if I go to agency ID and I make right, right click, I can follow associations. So I can type one step deeper. And here, if I go deeper with the agency ID, I got linked to the agency table. And here I can see all the detailed data of this agency. It's a Sunshine agency and it is in Rochester, United States. Same I can do for the other associations. I can here also go back to the association from the association. Ah, here, it is here. Go back here. I can go to this customer, follow association, customer, and I see the customer data. And this is now really awesome because um, here we have a possibility to deep dive into data without doing our own views. We just use this one view. And this can go even deeper. If this table has also associations and the next table has also associations, we can really um, drop down several levels. And this is not possible in the old SAP ABAP data dictionary or world to, to do this. That's only now in this um, UCDS view possible. And it saves a lot of time by analyzing data later. Okay, uh, we have some semantics. We have also seen before in our table definition. We have one semantic here in addition, which is currency code true means the next field is keeps the currency code. We have some uh, really, really helpful semantics here for the created by, created at. So all these administrative fields get filled automatically just by writing down this add semantics user created by true. That means the following field will be filled in a create or update scenario. An update scenario is a, the um, changed by it will be filled but with all these semantics this administrative fields will be filled automatically that's really nice this has to be um, developed usually by hand and yeah it's time consuming um, all these three associated tables um, here from line 11 to 13 are here in line 42 to 44 are published so that they can be used also by the web service later. We have our database table and one step higher we have our data model. That means we have our um, CDS view. The behavior stuff will come later. Next step is 
we are going to the business service provisioning we're doing the data model projection directly into the Eclipse I say new again data definition I give it a new name that is set C underscore travel SP3 uh, MSP3 and the set is our customer namespace and the C is for the consumption view description um, projection SP3 for travel and I can click to I use my transport and click finish so here we go, we have now a CDS view of type projection. Once again, I'm going to copy and paste. I have to substitute SP1 with SP3 because this is from my old template. I'm going to activate it. Not yet activated. Now it's done. If I hit enter, it doesn't look like much different than the table or the CTS view. But the magic here behind is that we have a lot of annotations here inside and these annotations are quite powerful because they create our, yeah, let's say, our fury. So that means we have here already a kind of um, implementation of the fury elements. So here a facet is like a tab, and here we have travel, we have line items that's like a little bit like, um, reminds me to the old write statement from ABAP where we have here a line item on position 10 with a travel ID or on line item on uh, position number 20 then uh, the agency uh, on position 30 we have the customer and so on and so forth we have several L um, position 40, 41, 50 where something is written to a user interface so that means we have on the one hand side here data fields and on the other hand side definitions of user interface elements that are yeah, presented to a screen later. And also we can put um, hidden annotations to suppress fields. So far to this projection, the projection can have also less fields than the CDS data model view. So the next will be that we are creating the service. For this, we are going to the right click on our package, new other service definition. We have searching for service definition. Next, so we call it set UI C travel M. SP3 give it a name a uh, description use our transport finish and we have here basis of service I also go to copy paste this go to substitute the post the postfix activated and this is just showing me what it exposes so it exposes my consumption view which is my projection view exposes also the customer table the agency table the airport table the currency table and also a country table 
though with the exposure of this also we get a search help afterwards but we will see later on it is already activated the last step we have to do now is we have to build the binding of the service therefore we have to go not to new now we have to go to the service definition right click and enter here new service binding we give it a name we have already had here service binding we use our transport and here we have a service binding we have a binding tape of OData and we can activate it now so the service is then visible to the outside hit activate and a lot of things are now generated okay now it's done so we have a lot of entities here now travel agency airport passenger country currency travel processor um, where do they come from they come from our exposure of the service definition because we have here our um, CDS view this projection view with a alias travel processor we have the customer with the alias passenger agency with travel agency alias airport airport currency is the same and country is also the same and those are now are going to be visible also here and what is really really awesome here is that we can now do a preview to this app because the app is mostly already defined in the coordinator service projection here with this ui um, annotations if i go here to travel processor in my service binding and go to preview i can i have to log on here And I can see now my app. Make it a little smaller. Here we have a uh, possibility to save our settings here. We have here a filter bar, which we can collapse and expand. We can click on go and we see our three entries of the database table. And we can also go to detail, click in and see here the travel details yeah which is not much more as i have in the line view but yeah we have a small app at least i think that's really great to now is that we have the database table the modeling the business service provisioning and finally we get the preview what we have now is a quite simple application that is only reading the data and displaying the data what we want to have now is a real CRUD application and this is quite easily possible with the use of behaviors behavior definition and also behavior implementation and it's a kind of object where we can put in coding to make, for example, yeah, creating the next ID of a key or, for example, making checks or validations like please enter only a begin date of the travel which is, which is in the future and not in the past or something like this. And um, we're going now to do this within our Eclipse. Let's create a behavior now. For this, we are going to our CDS view. On CDS, our first CDS view. And say here, the so right mouse click, new behavior definition. And it's already named. There's a description already in, because I did this once. 
and I use the transport, click finish, and I have a behavior defined. And it delivers me a create, update, and delete possibility out of the box. Because it is a managed scenario, this was um, visible before by creation, it was of the implementation type managed, therefore it gives me out of the box this, yeah, this full CRUD features. What I'm going to now to do is I add some additional data, which I will now do with this copy paste. Okay, what I did here is a, um, a ITAC master, which is a special key. We have a lock master, that means we have a real locking. If another user is doing a change on one item, um, a second user cannot do changes on the same item. And I can add some um, properties to fields. That means I can make fields read only like this administrative fields like last change at um, created by created add and so on. And I can make fields mandatory like the agency ID or the status or the booking fee when I create them or even if I change them. Or I can make the travel ID read only because I want to calculate this travel ID key which is readable. Um, which is not the uniform ID, it is a human readable key like 107 or 108 or something like this. And you see here this class is not yet existing, we have to create it afterwards, but we can also activate it, even if this class is not existing. Uh, by the way, I have here a hint that it tells me this class does not exist yet, but we'll come to this point later. But first I'm going to my next um, CDS view, this is the our projection, where we also add a behavior. So we make one behavior over the other. This is also correct. I'm going to finish. And what I have here, here I have use create instead of the other behavior we have not use, we have just create, update, delete. And here within this one, we have uh, not the right one here. Yeah. We have use, create, update, delete. That means this propagates the um, CRUD process to the service. First, we go to the service and check the um, what, changed, what changed now. I activate it, go to service binding test what um, happens now. I go to travel process preview. I log on. Ah, already logged on. So what do we have here? We have now create and delete. I can do now a creation of a new one. Entry, create, enter everything what I have. Customer date, begin date, end date, and please have a look. I can also do it in the past, it doesn't harm at the moment. Quite expensive here. Just enter here something. Save. And you see it calculated the ID zero because we don't have yet a coding which is. Um, which is giving us a new travel ID. So I have zero, and if I want to create a new one, it will tell me that this key is already existing. And I want to save this. It's telling me, oh, with the same key, already there's an instance there that I cannot close this. Leave page. Okay, what we have to do is now we have to implement a coding that is calculating the next um, travel ID. So um, if we have 107 uh, is a, as the highest value, then we want to add one and create here a new item with travel ID 108. This we can do with the help of the 
behavior implementations. But before we have to enhance a little bit our behavior implementations. First, let's go to our behavior imp um, definition of the data model. I'm going to do the copy copy paste magic. We entered here some read only fields that the travel ID is only read only. I ah, know this one this, this was one already before. Here the the my key is a um, uniform ID which is not so well human readable and with this line this key is generated automatically. Read only numbering managed so take care by yourself and create a new a new number. The travel ID is read only and we have also an action here defined an action which is later this accept travel button we will see later in, in the in the demo where I can change the status of a travel and we have a validation for the customer here which is called a validate customer or validate dates that means it doesn't make sense if I enter a travel date in the past if I do a new booking and here the determination of the calculate travel key on modify um, or let's say on create that means here this is important for us for our ID to calculate later on let's activate this before we go to the class we are going to the behavior definition of the projection we're adding also here something it's only a single coding line which is this one. Oh no there are two lines I see so I'm going to copy and paste all of this and what we and we added here is this use etag for the special key and this use action accept travel that this action button is created then. So we will see in a demo later. Activate it. And now we go back to the behavior definition of our data model. And now we have here this class. I click on this class, which is not yet existing. I push control and one. And now it tells me, yeah, this is not yet here. I just double click and it lets me create it. I'm here now in my class. So I have some global types which we keep as it are. And we get the local types. And here I have again some magic coding to implement. This time much more coding. And as we have seen before, we had this, um, we had for this calculate travel key, what was it? Yeah, we had this calculate travel key. For this calculate travel key, we put in now a method into this class that will handle this, um, yeah, on create that we calculate that key. What we are doing now is here, we have a method which is calculate travel key for travel calculate travel key. That's importing the keys. And if I double click here, I can see here the method implementation. So to see it in detail, what is happening here, we just go to the debugger, activate it, and I can double click here. And I set a breakpoint here. We, we go to the debugging mod to see especially what the coding will do here. So the expectation is that it's just calculate for calculating for us a new travel ID number. We're going back to our service binding to test it. Go 
going to the preview. Go. The highest number is 107. We're going to expect that 108 is created. We see here a green line, which is our runtime debugger. So we see here uh, when we can step over with F5 or this icon and um, uh, for the next line and jumping over a method with this icon, which is F6. And I'm going to, I jumped one, one field further. So there was a select from the um, our travel table selecting the maximum number of travel ID and bringing this into this variable. And if I hover over it, we see that's the number 107. You can also double click and then I see here on the right hand side, um, it's quite similar to the sub um, upper runtime environment on the sub GUI. I jump to the next line where this travel ID is added to one. So we have now 108. And the next lines are modifying uh, and updating the fields in the app. And that's it. That means finally we receive in our app. If I come back to my app, a number 108. Voila, here we come. 108. That's what we received. There, in the coding which I implemented, or which is in, available in the tutorial, there are several other special checks. If I double click here, if I go to edit, I can see what is checked. If I go here to the past with my travels, which doesn't make sense, then I get an error. The date must be on or after the actual system date. Okay, then I make today. And I put my end date before the start date, which doesn't make sense. Also, this is checked with the coding. Begin date must not be after end date. Okay, I correct also this one. And I can also check for the customer. This is also implemented. Just take a number, which is not yet existing. Oh, I have to put it here. And the customer is unknown, therefore I have to go to search help to correct this. And then I go to save. That's it. If I go back, we have this action where I can change the travel the status. So accept travel is directly changing it to, from O to A. That means now the travel is accepted without having a save button here. Yeah, this is done directly with the action. So you can debug this by your own and check it out, the coding, quite straightforward. Okay, that's all for now. What we did now was creating this service and using it, doing behaviors, defining the behaviors, implementing the behaviors and testing it now. The next video, I will show you how the service is not only used in the preview, and test it. It's also showing how you use it with a Fury app. So thank you so much for being with me in this second video. I know it is long and it's not so easy to understand, but I'm sure step by step every ABAP developer can get this, what it is behind, and everyone should know about this. So Stay interested and I would appreciate to see you in my third video of this series where we're going to review um, the part of the tutorial where Fiori application is created that is using this service. So stay interested and all the best.